Did you know there are people out there so good at remembering things that they compete in tournaments of learning and they are known as memory athletes. In an annual contest called the World Memory Championships, they were given 20 minutes to remember a list of 72 random words. And on average, they scored nearly 71 of the 72. By contrast, an untrained control group could only manage 26. Picture where the spoons are kept in your kitchen, the socks in your room, the color of your toothbrush. These memory athletes use an ancient Greek technique called memory palaces. And once you master this technique, you too are going to dramatically improve your ability to study effectively and finally open up your dormant reserves of memory. The idea is simple. You walk through an environment like your house and you place objects in specific places and then you match the things you want to learn with those objects. So when you're trying to remember that information, perhaps the notes you took that day in class, this technique maps new information onto something that your brain has already evolved to do extremely well. Recall imagery in specific locations. The second technique I want to introduce you to is also known as the protege effect, aka teach someone what you want to learn. A 2007 study looked at this. How does teaching someone impact your learning? Students in this study who are also teachers to younger students, they scored higher on tests than pupils who are learning only for their own sake. Why? Well, the researchers found when you choose to teach someone else, you have to work harder to understand the material, to recall it more accurately and apply it more effectively. Something known as depth of processing. Physicist Robert Feynman created a mental model called the Feynman technique. This technique has four steps to it. Number one, write the name of a concept on the top of a blank page that you want to learn. Number two, write down an explanation of the concept as if you're teaching a new student. Number three, identify what's missing. Go back, relearn. And step four, review everything. Make sure you're avoiding using complicated language and try to simplify everything on the page as much as possible. Number three. If I asked you right now, is reading again and again a good way to learn? Is highlighting a good way to learn? Is using keyword monics? Well, all of these, they're scientifically proven to be relatively low in effectiveness for long-term learning. At the other end of the scale, things like practice tests, spreading out your learning, they are scientifically proven to boost your performance. Let's take a look. In 2005, a guy called Reagan A.R. Gurung assessed 229 students using 11 different techniques of studying. He then matched their techniques with their final exam scores. And many, but not all, of the techniques they used, they did achieve better exam scores. For example, the number of hours they put in, it did help. But things like starting studying early or reading material before and after class, that didn't seem to be effective. Reagan also found detriments to studying and one of them was listening to music. So what did he find that does work? Well, Reagan actually found a technique that strongly predicted your exam score. And that was the number of times a student did practice 
test. This one thing, above all others, had a significant impact on how well they did on their final exam. Have you ever heard of number four, the Zagonik effect? It's a concept in psychology that argues you remember uncompleted or interrupted tasks better than the ones that you complete. Why? When we start a task and then interrupt it, it creates a task specific tension that can improve your cognitive function. So step away from your desk as you study. That tiny little tension that you feel. I still need to finish reviewing that chapter. I haven't done the next paper yet. It keeps the task at the top of your mind. And this keeps your brain focused on it. This way you can easily access that information and remember it better. So how do you take advantage of this technique? You take frequent breaks during your deep work. The Zagonik effect suggests that students who take breaks during which they perform totally unrelated activities, studying other subjects, reading a book, going on a three minute walk, playing the piano, they remember material better than students who go through longer study sessions without taking a break. Cramming is better than not studying in the short term, but is seven hours in one day better than one hour every day for a week. If you were given the same amount of time for study, would you be better off spreading it out? And the answer is a resounding yes. Space it out. This is known as distributed practice. And how general are the effects? How consistent? Well, one group of scientists looked at 254 studies involving over 14,000 people and overall students recalled more after spaced study than after cramming and massed study. 